and yet willfully, you have to understand that, yeah, yeah. it's not anybody <laughs> threatening us, willfully we are suppressing. That's correct. That's true. Yeah, so I go to verse 21, it says, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. So when you begin to suppress, you no longer can even see anything. You start going mm -hmm. deeper in the dark, yeah. and all of a sudden it's, you don't know, it's like you said, there is no more absolute truth. That's right. Hey, these verses right in here are a mirror. Okay, mm -hmm. so don't get angry, you're getting angry. That's, uh, <laughs> this is the mirror talking. So, it, you know, internalize it, but that's right. I mean, look at those verses. Read it again. That's yeah, uh, yeah. So, like verse twenty-one: For although they knew God, they knew that they neither glorified Him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Now, like now, then you wonder why things are falling apart. <laughs> I had a professor once, and he said, you know, and he right in front of the middle of class, he goes, in, uh, this was in seminary, and he goes, you know, there's an F word in the Bible. <gasps> You could have heard a pin drop. We thought lightning was going to come down. He goes, there's a four-letter F word in the Bible that you never want to be called. And we were so caught off guard. We didn't know what he's talking about. And it's literally the word fool. That is one of the ultimate insults in the Bible. To be called a fool. And here it is. Yes, here. Foolish hearts. So just saying, just saying, this is hitting me as hard as it's hitting anybody else. Yeah, we, we suppress that truth. And then we began to receive everything else as truth. All of a sudden, what's wrong now becomes right. Accepted. Yeah, it's accepted. And it's okay. And, you know, and, I, and you look at what's being taught in the school today. It's okay. Talking about the gender thing. You know, it's okay. That's like, holy cow, come on, man. Go ahead, use whatever bathroom you want. Really? Yeah. You know, and everything is because why? We have began to suppress that truth. You know? And... Uh, it's not a popular message because no. we're, we're talking about a moral climate that has fallen. And just like you said, we're suppressing to the truth, we're running away. You know, let's, let's be real for a minute. Let's not react, let's not be angry, let's just take a good honest look mm -hmm. at truth, i.e. these verses in scripture, mm -hmm. and let's just apply it to what's happening. Let's not ignore it, let's not run from it, mm -hmm. and then let's just rationally decide with yeah. wisdom, what do we do next? Yeah, what is it, that, you know, I, I don't know how many Christians I've seen in the last four years start suppressing the truth yeah. because they see something and, and they start suppressing the, uh, trying to justify what they want to do and what they want, you know, and it's suppressing before their hearts grow darker and darker and darker and before you know it, you know, what's out there becomes okay, accepted, and they literally grow so dark, they no longer, they just grow this numbness that literally, you know, mm -hmm. as the foolish hearts become the dumbness, you know, <laughs> they're right. And they start making those dumb moves, they start making those dumb decisions, those foolish decisions. Yeah. And before you know it, what happens? Their families start falling apart at the seams. Their children are falling apart at the seams, you know, and their lives. And their lives, and, and all around them, you know, things are falling apart at the seams. And it just goes on from one thing to another. Why? Because they've gone to a place of pressing so much that they've actually just fallen in a place of darkness. They no longer can see the truth, absolute truth that keeps them delivered. You know what? I stand at the front of the line when it comes to being dumb, okay? <laughs> this is by no means pointing the finger at all. And I reflect on God's truth as a measurement for my life, as a, as a mirror, and to say, okay, what happened? And I need to reflect and be honest and say, okay, why did I suppress? And a lot of times I'm afraid. I'm afraid as a leader of my family, or I'm afraid as a, a man among, you know, at work. And There's that little fear factor. We all have it. Let's be real. If you don't have the fear, you're probably motivated by pride. Mm -hmm. So either way, let's not suppress the truth, because otherwise, the fabric just keeps fraying apart. Yeah, and God give, had given us an absolute truth called the good news. You know, here Paul is sharing, first of all, he's got to share the bad news in order for the good news, right? That's right. And, you know, there is no good news if uh, you've accepted the bad news is the good news. So, you know, Paul is that, you know, we can't, we can't share the good news 
if there is no bad news, you know, and it's, it's, there are no morals, yeah. right, uh, unless we're able to, you know, know what these morals are, that, that, that actually, you know, that the spiritual morals, the, the principles that we yeah. need to have. And, and let's be honest, when we don't agree, and there's enough people that don't agree with the oh, yeah, yeah. truth, it's true, yeah. we not just suppress it, but maybe we'll acknowledge it, but we choose to redefine it. <laughs> hey, well, that's a good one. Therefore, oh, yeah. when we redefine it, oh, good, see, I'm not in trouble anymore. I'm not suppressing it. I just don't acknowledge it for what it is, remember? Do you like my purple paper? <laughs> yeah, it's not purple, it's white. Nah, nah. And everybody that wants to agree with me because of whatever reason, if ever, then you just decide to redefine it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So let me do a little something I can put down here. I said that, you know, Paul, like, he shares the bad news. The very reason why the good news must be the driving force of the true kingdom existence and ultimately reveal the power and likeness of God being revealed in and out through us, showing a distinction of the power of godly righteousness in demonstration of the power of his living word, shedding light between right and wrong. Thank you. So here we, you know, I mean, this is, we got to get to that place where the power is, is, in, is, is operating through that word. You know, and that, because if, if that's the case, and, we, and people no longer believe in absolute truth, then we better have a truth that can that we can reveal its power. That's right. You know, because we're coming against the power of of religious intelligence, intellectual reasoning, intellectual. You know, and we've gotten to that place, or you know, when I've been self-made, I did it, I did it, did it, and uh, you know, they, they, you mentioned something about. Back in history, um, a speaker you would listen to, and he just kind of went through history and found out there's cycles of God working, and all the way from the, you can see it when he oh, yeah. works with the Israelites, etc. I think if you ever you know, heard the saying, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Uh, yes. And if you look back in history, back in uh, like year, um, year well, <laughs> a long time ago, in the Renaissance period, back in Europe. We had the age of reasoning. And if you look at the correlation, what happened? Church took a plunge. Mm -hmm. But it was an awakening time. I'm telling you, you're going to have those moments where the climate, ultimately, call it intellectual reasoning, call it whatever you want, you're going to see a decline in the moral fabric. That's just a fact. And I think that's a pattern that you can see throughout different periods of history. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm sure all of you can email in and you know, nail me on this one. But even the Roman Empire, one of the greatest, if ever, um, fantastic time of prosperity, organization, uh, advancements, tying off with what the Greeks were talking about, but right out of the church. Yeah. During that time, massive persecution and ultimately the end of that cycle what happened it's gone let's go back even further probably and arguably the best ever kingdom Babylon Whoa, man. Was... come on now mm -hmm. Babylon got so how should we say conceited mm -hmm. uh, that as it said as stated in history as fact their takeover came from damming up a river miles away. <laughs> Hello, do you think you'd know about that? But I guess there was one very large party going on. So much they didn't see the waters of a river. This where people snuck in through the waters into uh, Come on, really? That's 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 fiction. No, that's fact. And wow, how the there's another expression, how the mighty have fallen. Mm -hmm. We need to be careful that we even at this time do not become in such a place that we're so complacent and that we don't, first of all, see the fabric falling apart. Two, that we don't acknowledge, that not only do not acknowledge it, but if we do acknowledge it, we see it, we don't do anything about it. Because the ultimate conclusion of that is, you know, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. He loves us so much that he's going to get our attention. Yeah. He's going to bring us to him. He's always talking. 
So again, what has he been telling you? And Joel's right. 2014 is the time of power. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. going to be revealed, and it's going to happen. Yeah, you know, if we have lost all absolute truth, then how can there be moral standards? What's moral standard? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, yeah. I, and when that happens, then things do start falling apart at the seams. You know? They will. And I'm so tired of hearing, <clears throat> we don't get political, but let's just say people. Mm -hmm. I'm so tired of hearing them argue back and forth, back and forth, going, why, why, why? And you can always point back to the suppressing of the truth. Our fabric's falling apart here, folks, mm -hmm. you know. And it, this is a great set of verses out of Romans that it gives you, hey, here's a big reason why. No, no, it must be something else. Well, and also, why, are we, why is this happening? Oh my gosh, why is this happening? Why is this? Just saying, you know, let's, maybe we work a little bit harder on getting that fabric back together. I think it's worth a shot. Yeah, Romans 3.18 says, There is no fear of God before their eyes. Mm -hmm. We no longer become conscious of sin, basically. Uh -huh. We have yeah. suppressed everything, right? So we're no longer conscious of sin. We're no longer conscious of the fear of God anymore. Well, we don't want to because that's a mirror. We don't want to look at it. Yeah, we don't, yeah. And, and here's one, I, I like in Ephesians 4.18, it says, They are darkened in their understanding, alienated, from the life of God because of the arrogance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. And then what else? Then so, so there's a division. There is something that's dividing. It comes to divide that. That divide us from the truth, you know, separating us. Yeah. You know, so, um, so I put down what else tries to divide us from reaching our destiny? Then what does God have to conquer or to counteract this measure of unbelief that tries to divide and separate us from our promises that God has proclaimed over our lives? And one of these things of, of division is found in, in Jude 1, 17 through 20. And it says, but dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers, scoffers and will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. <laughs> That's a loaded statement right there. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go anywhere to that one. Um, well, here, here's what God says. And here's the answer. For now. And he says, but you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. There you go. See, now it comes right back to what you were talking about, the individual. You build yourselves up. It's an individual position built up little by little as a result of obedience to the Word of God and of following the example of Christ. You know? That's you know, so there is, there is that, what everything is, there is the, the world has a way of separating us from God. Why? Because we've been suppressing and suppressing, we've been separating ourselves. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, go ahead. In verse 20 of uh, Ephesians 4, mm -hmm. is, is that what this is? This is Ephesians yeah, yeah, 4. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. I know in the uh, ESV version it says, but that is not the way you learn Christ. Oh, yeah, yeah I like that, yeah. You know what? We're not, I'm going to take a step back. Why didn't they learn Christ that way? Let's be a little reflective for leaders out there. Are we sharing? Are we equipping? Are we training? And are we teaching what we should be? And that's a little touchy. I have to say, I'm going to, I'm going to go on the limb here. But I think a lot of it's just not connected. Yeah. I'm not going to say we're not Revealing God's truth and what we how we teach, train, share in the messages. But let's be real. I'm not gonna say, oh, people, you know, non-Christians, they're all responsible for this decline in the moral climate. I disagree. They know no better. And but who does? Yeah. Those who say, I've been a relationship with God. I confess with my mouth, believe my heart, Jesus Christ the Lord. Oh. But the rest of the week, I've not seen it. Remember, Matthew 5, Ephesians, and 
and Galatians 5. Matthew 5 and Galatians 5. Those are the two biggies. Put your life on that. So that no one can say, but that's not how you learn Christ. And that's definitely not who Christ is. So let's, 2014, it's going to be shooting straight. It's going to feel not so great, but great things are going to happen.